Welcome back, everybody. Now, joining me on Talking Pikes is Sean Ward, who starred, of course, in Coronation Street as Callus Callum Logan. And, of course, uh, fingers in military drama, Art Girl. Sean, welcome to Talking Pies. Cheers, my good man. How are you? Oh, sure. Good to see you. Good to see you. Cheers. We're having a little chat off air, actually. We actually are from basically the same place. <laughs> yeah, money, up north. Up north. South Manchester. Gatley, you, you grew up in. and uh, yeah. Yeah, I, was, I used to play for Cheadle Cricket Club. There we go, but it's not about me. Uh, let's get stuck into you now. I'm keen to see how you really kind of got into acting, really, and what that must have been like for you. Uh, it was a bit of a mad one. I went for a, an open audition when I was 12. Oh, right. Yeah, so I never really expected that I could make a career out of it and ended up getting this this job that Trudy Styler had paid for it and next minute I was living in Kensington, chilling with wow. Sting. Yeah, really? kind of like ripped out of high school in like year eight. What's Sting like? <laughs> He's actually a sound guy. He's very quiet. Is he? Yeah. OK, there you go. So that must have been a big upheaval for you then, really? <sighs> yeah, yeah, it was mad. And I went back to high school and no one bloody spoke to me. <laughs> like, really? Yeah. What, because they were, what, because they were intimidated? Yeah, I think they thought I was off making movies and then the film never came out. It went straight to DVD. No! So they were like, you lied. You lied to us, yeah, you've just been missing, you've been truant. You never even made a film. You never even made a film. But talk to me a bit about, well, I don't know, really. I mean, it was Corey... One of the biggest things for you, I don't know. It's very hard to sell with actors because you think you think that this is the thing they'd be most proud of, and then quite often they say no, it's not. <laughs> nah, Cory blew blew it open yeah. for me. Yeah. yeah, it was like overnight rock and roll fame, being in Manchester and playing the bad boy. Yeah, I didn't really, I, I didn't really like it though. Why not? I don't know. It just was too much. The more people I met, the lonelier I got. Really? Yeah, it was too intense, man. It was like everybody watches Cory. Yeah. So whether they're six years old or 95, you can't go anywhere. Do you ever get confused for the character? Because I've heard a couple of people talking about, like, if their character's done something like killed someone and it gets shouted out in the show, I can't believe you've killed Sharon! It's like, I didn't actually kill Sharon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I used to notice people, like, wouldn't say hello to me. I'd be like, you can come and say hello. And they'd just be, like, filming me on the sly. I'd be like, I can, I can see you. <laughs> but then it's interesting. So talk me through what happened there, really, because you were in Our Girl as well. That was an absolutely massive hit. Yeah, that was huge. Like, the opportunity there was amazing. Like, the first season I got, I only had one line in it. Mm. And then I managed to get to season four or five, and I was, like, one of the leads Brilliant. against Michelle. Brilliant. So and just keeping my head down and being on my mark. Yeah, keeping it down, working, working hard yeah, as yeah, well. Yeah. But, I mean, look, mate, you know, some of the things that have happened recently as well, you've been very outspoken about, about the vaccine. I have. Right? And that has had an impact on your career, I believe, has it? Massively. Huge. Well, talk to me initially. But this is, you know, this is the People's Channel, and some people watching this, of course, well, I imagine many people will be vaxxed up to the eyeballs and probably yeah. willing, to, willing to queue up for another one, maybe get it in the eyeball next time. Um, but... You obviously are not one of those people. Why not? Um, mainly because it being mRNA, which is experimental. We've never used it in human history, on such a large global scale especially. Um, the efficacy we now know wanes, even though I'm probably not allowed to mention that because a lot of Ofcom and all that. Um, to me, it just seems like uh, a huge medical scandal that we've never seen in human history. And I think it's going to go down as... Yeah, well, I, I mean, it may, may well do. I mean, obviously, yeah. obviously, I kind of have to say, you know, that now that the usual stuff, which yeah. obviously, you know, we have anyone, to have the balance. Anyone can, uh, anyone can take this vaccine, and indeed, it can save lives. And yes. so there we go. Uh, but on top of that, um, one thing I will say is that I actually am in a, a, a WhatsApp group for like local re residents, people in my block of flats, right? And mm. it never ceases to amaze me the ones who have like had four jabs, or, they keep getting COVID. Oh, yeah, it's a definitely a um, pandemic of the vaccinated. It's, it's, it's staggering. And they go, gosh, you know, I'm so, I'm so ill. I mean, oh, by the way, I'm not telling anyone not to get the vaccine here. I'm certainly, and I'm not trying to say that it doesn't work at all. I mean, undoubtedly, for some people, it's massively saved their lives. I do want to make that very clear. I'm not, by the way, I'm not getting shouted out. This is genuinely what I, what I want to say. But at the same time, I can't help but feel like if someone said to me, have four of these jabs, but you can still get this thing and pass it on and it'll still level you... I think logic would say to me, 
I'm a bit concerned about maybe how good this thing is. Yes. I think I saw on Twitter, it was like, if you gave your dog four jabs for rabies and he still got rabies, would you be going to the vet mm. to say there's a problem there? But you've had a lot of pushback on this, haven't you? And, and, and has it affected your career or has it been more a social media thing? No, it affected my career. I've been plastered over the front page news for attending protests. You know, I was stood with the NHS staff and the workers, well, which luckily got the U-turn on that, but... I've been told I'm killing granny, I was arrested, front page news, no one will hire me, they know I won't do a PCR test, so I think mm. insurance-wise they don't even bother anymore. Right. And yeah, natural immunity died in 2020, so... Well, it's interesting, isn't it, because uh, there are a lot of places now, in fact, I think many places in the world now, where you don't have to prove that you've been vaccinated mm. and you don't have to do a PCR test or anything like that. So mm. it does seem strange that people would not let you work because you're unvaccinated and... And don't want to do a PCR test? I imagine it's to do with insurance and with it being, you know, I was running a lot, which is, like, behind the camera. Mm. So, like, up in Manchester, if there's a gig at Old Trafford, mm. you've got to be jabbed because they won't let you go around Ronaldo, even though he's probably not jabbed himself. Mm. Well, we're, we're well we don't know, but, yeah, yeah no. Nah. But all staff, they, they, it's, it's, it's just the insurance. I think it's just a box that they've got to take now. OK, all right, but moving on and looking ahead now for yeah. the future... What you got coming up? So, um, I'm hitting the streets. Oh. I've kind of thought... Because I've talked to people for two years on the internet about... And I've created, created this safe space on my Instagram and I get a lot of whistleblowers from the NHS. But I just thought, you know what, I'm going to hit the streets and just start asking people questions like, do you trust the government? Do you trust the mainstream media? Right. Like, so, I'm doing that at the minute. It's called Lazy Woke, Lazy Woke TV. Um, and then, yeah, just, just generally trying to find out what people's views are because we're just kind of forgotten about like we're the people that run this country not the elites mm. in parliament and westminster like we're the people the real people that run this do you know what i mean so have you always been quite skeptical of power um yeah i suppose i have yeah yeah i've never been <laughs> maybe my adhd helped and i didn't listen in school so they didn't program well, it didn't me. sound like you're at school a lot given the, given <laughs> no, the yeah, career, yeah, to yeah, be yeah. fair yeah but, but um, the programming didn't work all right, OK, let's finish on a, on, 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 a, on a positive. What's been the best moment of your career? The best moment or the best party or the best whatever? I've got to give my hats off to our girl travelling the world. We shot in Malaysia, we shot in South Africa. I've travelled the world with that show, so... And I met some amazing, you know, men from the army and women from the army, so that helped. Yeah, absolutely. And on that, I mean, we don't seem to treat them with enough respect, do we? I did a thing before about, obviously, what's been going on with an asylum seeker hotel, and there's a guy in there who's a firefighter who was living in that hotel, needed it for his address to see his kids at the weekend. I had a feeling he might have been a veteran. Yeah, well, there you go. And so it's, and it's like, well, you know, and then he gets turfed out. Wow. And it's, I, I, do, I do find that quite, quite shocking. But yeah, it's just, just, just lastly, in your... I don't know how much of it, kind of the, the acting bubble that you, you hang around with these days at all, but you know, do you think there's a lot of fake wokery going on there? People just saying <laughs> stuff yeah. because they think it's what, it's what other people want to hear. They actually haven't thought about it at all. Yeah. And I feel there's just, there's a lot of propaganda, like, you know, the media in the UK have never been trustworthy. And I feel like there's a lot of Autobot propaganda people just mm. regurgitating. Like, as long as I can just say live on TV, never Rishi, never Rishi. Oh, really? Never Why Rishi. Why not? The guy's a World Economic Forum puppet who wants to bring in digital currencies and nah, 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 nah. Well, there you go. I mean, it's strong stuff. Obviously, yeah. I now have to say that Richard Sinak <laughs> is, well, as far as we're aware, not a World Economic Forum puppet, but well, you're entitled to your views. I am, of I am. course. Absolutely sure. Thank you very, very much. I've enjoyed this, mate. Cheers. Great to have you on the show. Well, I'll see you out soon, mate. All right, take care. That was Sean Ward up there, of course. Corey Star, our girl star. And also a fierce opponent of, I suppose, authoritarianism and indeed the vaccine.